welcome back. In last several lectures, we have uh, uh, discussed and studied on uh, helium ion microscope. Uh, today, we will uh, be, I will be talking on uh, some additional topic on helium ion microscope or ion microscope. Those are scanning transmission ion microscopy and micro analysis with helium ion microscope. Uh, in particular, uh, we will be discussing on imaging with transmitted uh, ions and also composition measurements with helium ion microscope. So, these two uh, things we will be discussing today uh, that is these are some additional capabilities of helium ion microscope. First, let us talk about scanning transmission ion microscopy. So, as the name suggests scanning means the ion beam has to scan on the specimen and transmission means the ion should transmit through the sample and it has to pass through the sample and then image that will form is nothing but transmission image. So, who, what has to be transmit, uh, transmit or that is the ions has to transmit through the sample. Similar to scanning transmission ion microscope, microscopy we have scanning transmission electron microscopy when electron beam pass through the sample that is called transmission electron microscopy and when electron beam scans across the sample we say it is a scanning transmission electron microscopy both are similar type. So, here uh, if the sample uh, uh, if the electrons or ion has to transmit through the sample then first thing is that uh, the sample should be very thin. If it is not thin uh, these electron beam or ion beam cannot pass through it. Second thing we should have a certain device or adapter to be placed at so that uh, at the bottom we have a some, some kind of screen or a type of detector to collect uh, how much ions or electrons are transmitted through the specimen. So, that has to be done. So, it is uh, it is little, little bit similar to the transmission electron microscope study or TEM which we are not covering here. Uh, the sample preparation uh, is done uh, in the similar manner as that of uh, prepared as that prepared for the transmission electron microscope. Uh, we normally take a uh, copper grid, copper grid here it is a copper grid, copper grid uh, and the copper grid uh, uh, has a coating of very thin layer of carbon around uh, approximately 5 nanometer thick carbon transparent carbon or some kind of polymer form bar type of coating to be provided that act as a support. Now, on this uh, grid which has a very transparent thin layer of carbon on which we will place our sample we will place our sample and that has to be put under the electron beam or ion beam. So, then uh, as it is very uh, thin uh, all most all ions will pass through it except where um, sample is placed. If the sample is placed here, if sample is thin enough then some ions will pass through it. If sample is thick enough uh, then ions or electron will not pass through it. So, from the transmitted ions from the transmitted ions we can get the signal. So, for example, here uh, a sample is placed which is thin enough so that some of the ion will pass through it and those ions will come and strike at the bottom uh, one uh, uh, we have a um, uh, object which is uh, at uh, tilted at 45 degree 45 degree and ions will come and strike this is gold coated this is gold coated. Once a ion strike to the gold coated uh, sub, uh, surface which is tilted at 45 degree that would create some secondary electron and those secondary electrons will be detected by a normal uh, Everett Thunley detector. Then we will see uh, from which region how many ions uh, pass through it and how many electrons are generated secondary electrons generated or signal generated and then we create an image. This is what nothing but uh, transmission my, uh, microscopic image it if the incident ion I, incident um, prop is ions we say it is a ion microscope if it is electrons we say scanning transmission electron microscope and here our uh, electron beam or ion beam is scanning over the specimen scanning over the specimen and then collecting the transmitted ions and from the transmitted ions the signal generated are used for imaging purpose. This is what the scanning transmission ion microscopic image and uh, because 
the ions which are passing through the sample, uh, they can produce uh, one ions can produce more number of secondary electrons like 3 to uh, 8 number of secondary electrons. Therefore, uh, signal to noise ratio is quite good. Moreover, again the ion induced secondary electrons have a better contrast as compared to the electrons. So, so in that respect uh, scanning uh, transmission ion microscope is superior compared to the scanning transmission electron microscope. But on the other hand, on the other hand ions have a much larger size and heavier mass. So, we cannot easily make the ions to pass through the specimen unless and uh, until the specimen is very thin enough. So, this is a disadvantage of uh, using uh, scanning transmission ion microscopy to make the sample to be very thin is not that easy tax and therefore, most of the ions cannot pass through it. So, therefore, uh, actually in practicality uh, scanning transmission ion microscopy is not that much popular or have been used uh, in the scientific community uh, yet. Mostly scanning transmission electron microscopy attached with TEM uh, is extensively used for uh, microanalysis and also other purpose. Because in transmission electron microscope the incident energy is much higher in the order of around 200 kV to 300 kV. Therefore, they can easily penetrate through the sample and provides the information which we cannot get it by scanning transmission ion microscopy. So, here you see uh, a type of device that is in that is being used here. So, um, uh, incident ions comes and here we um, put uh, um, that means hold the grid uh, with the specimen uh, here is same sample on the uh, sample on the TM grid then transmitted ions which comes is get collected uh, transmitted ion strikes to the gold coated uh, gold coated surface and then the secondary electrons generated is used for the imaging purpose and here you see the uh, as specimen like magnesium oxide uh, cube type of structure uh, in a uh, scanning transmission ion microscope. Here the um, periodic uh, dark and bright contrast uh, tells about the thickness fringe, thickness fringe in the left side of image and in the right side of image uh, the contrast here dark contrast indicate dislocation inside the specimen or, or inside the sample. So, some of the this information like presence of dislocation inside the specimen cannot be studied by uh, the scanning uh, scanning ion microscope when we study three dimensional feature. Here you see the information uh, which is inside the specimen that is the micro uh, inside the specimen or microstructure uh, because uh, the uh, image is formed uh, from the ions uh, which is passed through the specimen. On the other hand, in our just normal scanning ion microscopy or scanning electron microscopy, we are just seeing the surface features, surface the topology, surface features from the signal collected from the signals collected from the specimen. So, this, this is about scanning uh, transmission ion microscopy, as it is not as uh, popular. Uh, and not extensively used, uh, I am not covering much detail uh, on it. Uh, we will go next to another important uh, topic micro analysis with uh, helium ion microscope. Micro analysis means uh, measuring the elemental composition of the specimen, it is very important. So, for all scanning electron microscopic technique, uh, most of the cases energy dispersive detector is attached and that is used for measuring the elemental composition of the specimen. Uh, because any operator or user would like to know what material he is studying under the microscope, uh, whether it is, it is a gold or it is just a uh, iron or uh, anything. So, it is therefore important to know the elemental composition uh, that is of the specimen uh, which is under observation. In SEM, uh, we know uh, we use energy dispersive analysis where uh, every atom have a nucleus at the center and then we have uh, electrons, we have electrons and when incident beams uh, incident beam strikes on the atom, then it will first knock out an electron inert cell electrons. Uh, it will knock out an inert cell electrons if uh, the incident energy incident um, uh, electrons have an energy greater than ionization potential of that particular electrons. Once a vacancy is created here, once a vacancy is created here, then another electron from the outer orbital jump back to this vacancy and thereby this energy is caused as a x-ray. 
So, by measuring the energy of this x-ray, we know what atom is it and also by knowing how much such x-rays is coming, we can quantify the atoms present or element present in, in our specimen. So, in this cases to, uh, uh, to create or to remove knock out an electron from the inner cell, the incident electron's energy should be greater than the ionization potential. So, similarly, in case of whether it is same, it will be same for ions, actually not. Even though energy of the incident ion is equal to or greater than ionization potential of an electrons of an atom, it, it, it cannot still knock out an electrons because, uh, because the ions uh, though have energy much higher, uh, they have a much uh, lower velocity. Once they penetrate the sample, they have a much lower velocity and the velocity of the ions cannot match with the uh, velocity of the orbiting electrons. As they cannot match the velocity of the orbiting electrons, they cannot initiate the ionization inside the material and thereby the energy of the incident electrons just greater than the ionization potential or little greater than ion ionization potential is not sufficient enough to produce the x-rays from the specimen. For example, let us say we have here uh, let us say it is let us say let us say chromium. chromium. Uh, for chromium uh, um, case uh, to produce a K KSL x-rays, uh, if the incident uh, electron energy is around let us say 7 keV, 7 keV incident electron energy, incident electron energy, uh, it can produce uh, chromium K alpha which has an energy of around 5.5 keV. So, here energy incident energy is higher. So, it can certainly produce 5.5 kV, but for the ions uh, for a helium ion for helium ion uh, in order to produce this uh, chromium K alpha uh, this energy should be 40 mega electron volt 40 mega electron volts. You see there is such a huge energy we need to create an x-rays from a chromium uh, K alpha 5.5 kV electron volts. Therefore, practically it is not possible not feasible because our helium ion microscope operated in the range of uh, 25 to uh, 35 keV. So, with that energy range our helium ion microscope operate unless and until we go to very extreme we cannot do it. So, it is not uh, the um, it is not a possible way to measure the x-rays uh, from the specimen to measure the composition. We need to have some opposite uh, other ways. So, one of the approach is that uh, one of the approach is to use uh, backscattered ion that is called rather for back, um, backscattered ions. So, we know that uh, many of the ions uh, backscattered helium ions backscattered after the incident on the specimen strikes the specimen. So, many backscattered ions that are generated the energy uh, we can measure the energy of the backscattered ions to tell which atom present in the specimen. For a given type given ion type the energy of incident and energy of the backscattered ions uh, have a certain relation as a function of atomic mass, mass it changes. Uh, here you see how they changes like uh, energy of the backscattered uh, ions and here is the target atomic weight we see uh, it is not very linear, uh, but, uh, but at a particular uh, take off angle take off angle uh, of incident uh, ion incident ions and the detector and the detector placed at a particular uh, incident angle let us say it is th uh, 90 degree angle uh, at, uh, at 90 degree angle between, between the incident ion incident ion and the detector the relation of E scattered that means energy of the scattered ion backscattered ion is scattered to the incident energy ion E 0 incident ion E 0 can have a relation like m 2 minus m 1 divided by m 2 uh, plus m 1. Here is E scattered is the energy of the um, uh, scattered ions E 0 is the energy of the incident ion and m 1 is the mass of the incident ion mass of 
incident ion which we know m 2 is the mass of, mass of the target atom mass of the target atom that is our specimen target atom we know m 1 we know E scattering energy of the scattered ions we know uh, we know incident energy. So, we can know from there we can calculate the mass of the target atom and it is possible to an extent to knowing the mass of uh, uh, the target atom from the back scattered incident and back scattered ions. And if we look at, at 90 degree takeoff angle which is uh, most optimum uh, lower atomic number has, has a, some kind of linear relationship. But as we in, uh, increase the atomic weight of the specimen, these are placed much closer at energy. These are placed much closer at energy. Our detector is not efficient enough to differentiate this energy so that we can able to tell the difference between, let's say, iron, uh, chromium, and other materials here. So first problem. So this is the problem. In the lower atomic number, to an extent, so we can able to distinguish, but at higher atomic number, we cannot distinguish. And second point is the thickness. Second point is thickness, uh, as uh, thickness of the material uh, changes, the energy of the backscattered, uh, uh, backscattered ions will also uh, changes to an extent. So, for example, the detection of the backscattered ions also depends on the thickness of the specimen as well as the composition and the beam energy. So, all these factors it depends. As the thickness is increased, the beam mean energy of the elemental peak decreases in magnitude. As you see, as the thickness is increasing the beam and uh, en uh, that means um, the mean energy of the elemental peak decreases in magnitude and second thing is happening what as the thickness is increasing these individual peaks are getting broader individual peaks are getting broader for example this is a 30 nanometer thick sample so once ion beam penetrate into a thicker sample they keep on inter uh, interacting with the specimen and losing its energy and the backscattered ions which come out the specimen they automatically lose their uh, energy to a great extent and therefore, then mean energy is decreasing with increasing in the thickness and second thing they become broad. Once it become broad, it will be not easily be distinguishable and quantification cannot be done. So, this is again not a suitable technique. RBI's technique uh, uh, Rutherford backward scattering will therefore, be least useful on samples which are thick or contain high atomic number uh, materials and when beam energy is low. This problem is again there for uh, the for ion microscopy to uh, analyze the composition. But there is one alternative to this that is called uh, SIMS, secondary ion mass spectroscopy. So, in the secondary ion mass spectroscopy, the second in the secondary ion mass spectroscopy, an energetic beam of ions, as the name suggests, secondary ion mass spectroscopy. We measure the mass of the secondary ion, we measure the mass of the secondary ion, mass to charge ratio of the secondary ions, and therefore able to tell what element present on the specimen. So, an energetic beam of ion it is called primary ions is used to is used to sputter the sample. So, primary ions will go and strikes on the specimen and take out the secondary ions. So, it will bombard uh, it will bombard on the specimen surface and knock up the surface atom that is called sputter atoms and would by measuring the mass to charge ratio of the sputter atom we will able to tell uh, what uh, what atom is present on this uh, on this specimen surface. So, if the primary ion penetrate the target and uh, lose all or a part of energy during the collision cascade with the, uh, with the target and this process will lead to ejection of one or several target atoms. That is the spotted atoms among the emitted particles uh, there will be ions that is called secondary ions and these secondary ions when we measure the mass uh, that is of our interest in the secondary ion mass spectroscopy. There is dedicated SIMS secondary ion mass spectroscopy to measure the composition of everything from hydrogen to any, uh, to all the element in the periodic table. This is capable of doing all element in the periodic table. There is no other technique so it can measure the composition of hydrogen in a solid sample. These ions are extracted, the secondary ions are extracted using an electric field and accelerated to the mass spectrophotometer, mass spectrometer, and mass filter and counted by the detectors and uh, it produces, uh, it, uh, we gives, uh, we, uh, it will allow us to know the elemental composition of the surface. Because uh, it is important to note that atoms are mainly spotted from the first top few layers. So, it is a type of surface analysis technique which will uh, tell about the composition of the uh, surface. Uh, for oh, uh, now you see a um, uh, problem with helium ion microscope uh, for using the SIMS. Uh, for all ion, um, for all ion except helium, the spotter yield increases with increasing the impact energy. Certainly, impact energy increases 
uh, means uh, the spotter yield will be more. Spotter yield means second, the secondary ions will be yielding more. But for the helium, it is opposite. When we increase the uh, increase the uh, impact energy, uh, yield is not more. Then what happens? Why not it is more? It is because helium ions have a smaller mass, and they will with increasing the energy they will penetrate more deeper. Their beam range is deeper. Once helium ions goes deeper into the specimen, they cannot easily come out of the specimen. And once they go deeper, certainly they are lost in inside the uh, depth of the specimen, and they would not be efficiently able to collect. Uh, efficiently able to spot the atoms present on this specimen surface. This is the problem with helium ion microscope. On the other hand, other ions which has a heavier mass, uh, they bombard uh, with a larger mass with a larger momentum therefore, could spot away more number of specimen when they come with higher energy. And therefore, uh, helium ions used in helium ion microscope able to provide high resolution image no doubt because they have a smaller interaction volume from very near the surface signal comes out but it is only capable of spotting most element and materials at the rate which is too low to be practically meaningful for microanalysis problem. So, uh, our helium ion microscope should have a, uh, a another source with a heavy uh, atoms heavy ions such as uh, helium and neon. So, neon, neon can be incorporated to helium ion microscope to uh, make this composition analysis practically uh, possible. Uh, in uh, um, for the composition analysis our uh, therefore, com our helium ion microscope should be uh, attached with a neon or heavy, uh, uh, heavy ion source. Uh, two important things is uh, two, uh, there are two important things in the measurements of uh, composition. Uh, one is uh, the uh, secondary ion current and another is useful yield. Uh, these two are important. Uh, when we discuss about the sensitivity, uh, actually sensitivity of the seams is very good up to uh, parts per billion level. Uh, uh, and uh, for helium ion, the useful yield is generally low. Useful yield uh, is nothing but uh, the ratio of uh, the spotted ion, uh, spotted ion, ratio of spotted ions uh, to uh, then spotted ion detected to the um, to the spotter atom. this is the useful yield and this useful yield is generally lower with a helium ion microscope or with a helium ions. In order to maximize the ionization potential and that is uh, the secondary ions, uh, we uh, uh, need to use some reactive primary ion species, reactive primary ion species. The reactive primary ion species would uh, do certain reaction with the surface and will allow to produce more secondary ions and in particular to enhance the emission of the secondary negative secondary ions negative secondary ions electro positive primary ions species such as sesmium uh, is prepared o opposite case uh, if we want to um, uh, if we use electro negative primary ions such as let's say oxygen radical uh, that will favors uh, to uh, for the emission of positive secondary ions for example let's say aluminum indium such kind of uh, positive secondary ions we want to study in our specimen then we should uh, um, we should bombard it with a uh, electronegative primary ions. In this way, uh, we can use, uh, we can uh, increase the useful yield and therefore, uh, the um, composition capability of the equipment or seams. It is a um, seams machine, uh, how, how it is done, it is in the uh, certainly in the ion microscopy column. We have uh, additional things here is here, which is retractable uh, uh, ion optics, uh, which is placed below the column and that would allow us to collect the ions secondary ions and that secondary ions will go secondary beams of axis by passing through the transfer lens etcetera it will go to a uh, uh, mass spectrophotometer mass spectrometer. So, there are many kind of mass spectro uh, spectrometer such as uh, quadrupole mass spectrometer uh, we have time of flight uh, mass spectrometer uh, and we have magnetic sector of uh, mass uh, spectrometer. Uh, for example, quadrupole mass spectrometer have uh, not very high uh, uh, mass resolution and uh, low transmission uh, and it cannot uh, do uh, parallel measurements or scanning it cannot do the scanning. Similarly, time of flight have a, a good uh, wide range of the mass me me measurements can be done uh, in case of uh, um, in case of uh, time of flight uh, mass spectrophotometer uh, and that would uh, produce uh, quite a high uh, it that would allow us to measure uh, the uh, 
molecular ions with a larger mass, uh, larger mass, but again uh, that cannot uh, do the scanning and para, uh, uh, simultaneous measurements of different ions is also difficult. On the other hand, magnetic sector uh, uh, mass spectrometer allows to do uh, parallel, uh, parallel or simultaneous measurements uh, by um, using uh, uh, several detectors, one is a fixed detector and, and another is a movable detectors. With this kind of detectors, uh, we can uh, do the uh, uh, simultaneous measurements of uh, different uh, uh, species present on this specimen and measure uh, know their uh, composition. So, design requirements for uh, the SIMS, uh, the size and um, weight of this uh, certainly size and weight of this spectrometer should be compatible uh, for mounting the mounting in the helium ion microscope. Uh, the extraction system should not significantly degrade the prop size because extraction system means we have to apply potential uh, to, uh, to collect or to extract the secondary ions uh, and that potential can influence the uh, um, uh, spot size, primary beam spot size because uh, this is very fine primary spot size. So, it should not uh, it should not affect it should not uh, significantly degrade otherwise it will uh, deter deteriorate the performance for the imaging. Uh, detection of the positive and negative secondary ions should be possible it should allow us to not only detect uh, positive uh, it uh, not only detect one type of ions, but all both type of ions simultaneously. As the secondary ion current uh, is normally low extraction efficiency and overall transmission of the spectrometer should be high. Parallel detection of the secondary ions is important for avoiding the poor sample consumption the duty cycle that is why we, we use uh, mass uh, we use magnetic sector uh, mass uh, spectrometer in the uh, SIMS uh, attached to the helium ion microscope. Similarly, acquisition time of the SIMS image should be similar to that of a secondary electron image and reactive gas prodding is integrated to the SIMS to improve the useful yield. So, reactive gas prodding such as sesmium and uh, oxygen radical ions uh, is important. This is a mass uh, spectrum. What you can see here in this mass spectrometer, uh, mass spectrum, it, it, it is uh, uh, it has a very um, uh, uh, that means uh, uh, unique uh, tool to not only uh, detect the um, presence of hydrogen, but also the isotopes. Like as you see here, uh, lithium uh, lithium six, lithium six and uh, lithium seven. Similarly, uh, we can see the boron 11 and boron 10. So, not only um, it can uh, allow us to detect uh, hydrogen, but also it allows us to detect the isotope with a very high uh, sensitivity. Um, this is a mass spectrum for uh, lithium titanate and boron nitrate nanoparticles uh, mixture on a silicon uh, substrates with a neon ion beam with an acceleration voltage 25 kb at 6 pico ampere current. So, they have a quite good mass resolution quite a wide range of uh, mass can be also detected. In case of SIMS with helium ion microscope where we use mass uh, where we use magnetic sector uh, mass spectrometer, uh, we can only detect monoatomic or uh, small clusters not large molecular uh, clusters can be detected uh, in this process. For that kind of study one should use time of flight uh, spectrometer. Uh, the matrix element uh, which is uh, important uh, here uh, matrix element uh, matrix effect means the uh, uh, overall sample effect uh, it is it is that overall sample uh, uh, have a strong there is a strong dependence on the ionization potential uh, of the second ions to the local sample composition it is very uh, important effect and this matrix matrix elements complicate the quantification of the same signal so he, he, this is the formula for uh, measuring the composition of uh, unknown materials let us say uh, is the concentration of this species. We need to know the secondary ion current of the same species use full yield, uh, IP is the primary ion current and Y is the sputtering yield. So, knowing this one could able to know uh, these are all can be measured, one can measure the concentration of the species. Alternatively, uh, you one can uh, get the uh, relative sensitivity factor R RSF relative sensitivity factor. Uh, where I e x is the intensity of the secondary ion of trace element that we want to analyze and I m is the inter, uh, intensity of the matrix and uh, the relative sensitivity vector is, needs to be determined by analyzing the sample of a composition 
that is known that is known or similar to the sample composition. So, uh, by, by knowing this uh, doing a standard sample and then uh, from this intensity to we can measure the um, composition of unknown material in a sims. Uh, we can do other uh, other um, study with a sims also uh, in addition to the mass spectra measurement mass spectra gives us uh, the composition mass spectra gives us the composition of the specimen we can do the depth profiling depth profiling means uh, we can um, spot away uh, layer by layer because it is a surface analysis technique we spot the surface and then measure the mass of these uh, ions secondary ions similarly uh, we, we can keep on spotting at every level we can measure the mass of the spotted atoms spotted ions particularly sorry spotted ions and then uh, at every depth wh what are the, what is the composition of the sample can be measured so that is the depth profiling and from that uh, depth profiling we can uh, particularly analyze uh, multi layer thin films composition at different layer what are their composition at the interface what is their composition these things can be measured we can do 2d imaging uh, 2d imaging uh, as you see here this is a 2d imaging of a sample uh, lithium titanate boron nitrate uh, nanoparticle uh, the mapping of uh, or distribution of the, uh, lithium six, lithium seven uh, isotope and boron eleven isotopes, how they are distributed uh, in this sample uh, is measured by using SIMS uh, with a primary beam of twenty seven keV kilo electron volt with a neon with six pico ampere current. So this is a two D imaging. We can do the three D imaging, three uh, D mapping of the specimen uh, by using the SIMS uh, uh, technique. Uh, these all can be done. Uh, uh, using a SIMS secondary ion mass spectra, uh, spectroscopy. So, in conclusion what we have seen that uh, scanning transmission ion microscope uh, can be used for uh, very thin films uh, um, uh, that means one has to make the sample to be thin to be uh, uh, to be studied by scanning transmission ion microscope uh, actually practically uh, we, we do little with uh, such kind of uh, we, uh, such kind of study we, in a helium ion microscope because uh, scanning transmission electron microscope give much better performance because electrons have a much higher energy and smaller size they can penetrate much uh, uh, easily into the specimen. We do not need as thin sample as that we need in helium ion microscope and uh, for composition analysis in a helium ion microscope the SIMS is the best alternative uh, useful uh, that available today. Uh, it is a very sensitive uh, its um, sensitivity is down to parts per billion level. Uh, for uh, elemental and chemical analysis uh, that can be uh, done with a helium ion microscope. Uh, another important thing is that uh, in uh, the resolution uh, of helium ion microscope is ultimate uh, surface resolution uh, down to 0.5 nanometer, uh, but uh, helium, ion micro, uh, helium ion is not suitable or not uh, capable enough to, um, to spot away uh, the surface atoms and therefore, the useful yield particularly is very low uh, and that uh, helium ions uh, is not enough for uh, micro analysis or composition analysis for that one has to attach other heavy ions such as neon or argon some, some other ions such as gallium also can be used. Uh, this is important uh, for micro analysis technique uh, for measuring the elemental composition or chemical analysis to a uh, in, uh, introduction volume of 10 nanometer. Uh, these are the reference, the same books. Thank you.